my favorite TV shows is coming to the silver screen after being off of television for four damn years. I can't believe it's been that long, but uh, the Entourage movie is finally going to be in theaters near you on June 3rd, and two of the stars from the TV show and the uh, film are right here in studio, Jerry Ferrara and Kevin Dillon. Good to see you, Jerry. Uh, How are you? Good to see you, man. Oh, Kevin, I'll hey, reach Rich. over. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, my man. Do I have to say, what's up, bro? Good to see you. <laughs> How you good doing? So it's finally coming. This has been years in the making, correct? When, was, when was the first time, Kevin, you, you heard about the idea of maybe doing a movie? Was the TV show still you on know, the air? Right after the Sex and the City thing, there was a couple, there was some mumbling going on. Going, the thing hey, being like, a, like, you know? like millions of dollars being made. Of course, you know, they, they made a fortune on that. Yeah. If we get a piece of that, that'd be nice. Right. But uh, I mean, I think they broke records, that, that movie. Right. Uh, but they, we started talking about it right away. And then after we finished the show, I thought we within a couple of years we'd probably do it. It took a little longer than I thought. But So who was holding it up, Jerry? Let's be uh, honest. Let's, let's, uh, let's throw it out there. Uh, Who's holding it, it up? I think it was Doug Allen because he didn't. He was lazy and wasn't writing the script. I'm going to call him out <laughs> right go. here on the Rich Eisen show. <laughs> Your executive producer. It took Mark Wahlberg kind of going up to Doug and saying, what are you doing? Like, right. Why are you... Write the script. Like I'll get it made if you write it. And uh, he sat down and finally wrote a great script. And uh, and Mark got it done. And uh, I mean, look, if you look at the last episode too, the series, we left it a little open ended with that moment with the Ari character after the credits. That sure. There was still maybe more to do with these characters. Right. The, the show always had legs. We felt we could have done two more seasons. So. Why was it so popular? Do you think? Why do you think? And it's just so. I think popular. the fantasy aspect of it. You know, the guys living the life, the money, women, fame. Mm -hmm. But it's also that the friendships they have. These guys really, they love each other. Yeah. And, and that's why you care about them. Yeah. And you could see that you guys genuinely do like each other. I mean, I it like does this come guy. through. It, it really, I have to say, you know, and it was pretty instant with us. Like, it, people talk about chemistry and all that. Like, I don't think you could do it in sports. I don't think you could do it with a movie. Like, you either kind of have it or you don't. You can't cast it just like you can't draft it. It right. either happens or it doesn't. And fortunately for us, we... We had it right away, and I, I love these guys. These guys are my brothers. Like I, we, we didn't take four years off mm -hmm. from our friendship, you know, even though we were off the air for four years. I'm here with Jerry Ferrara and Kevin Dillon here on the Rich Eisen Show, and you guys also share an affinity for the New York Football Giants. Oh, that we I know. do. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We do. What do you think of the, the draft? What do you guys think of the draft? I we did good. I mean, it, we, we, we couldn't really go wrong because there were so many problems. That oh, we, no. <laughs> you could kind of just go, all right, we need a safety, and we were right. Well, they, they traded up for one yes. at this top of yeah. day two we needed and they needed that kid they needed landon collins yes. in the worst way and they got him and uh, we got a tight end we needed a tight end real bad yeah. so many spots that we really need so we couldn't really go wrong but i, th I think we got like an a plus rating from whoever rated us or right. something we got an a at least i mean I, we haven't gotten an a in anything i've never got an a in my life <laughs> <laughs> well, at least yeah um at least you've got two in your name jerry so <laughs> what what had, have has Coughlin ever been on Entourage? Did you no, try to get Coughlin cool. on? No, we had, we did have Dicka. We had Barry Alvarez in terms of coaching. We never had Coughlin. Um, we were supposed to have Eli. Uh, the only giant we had, uh, Strahan was on. Strahan yeah. did come yeah. on and did a, a cameo. That was the only giant. There you go. There's a giant yeah. guy. Yeah. 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 Did Bel has Belichick ever been reached out to to be on Entourage? His son was hanging out on the set. Yeah. Do you remember that? I guess his son is good friends with Doug Allen. Okay. And he kind of, I don't know if it was like an intern kind of thing. I think yeah, he spent yeah. the summer where he, he spent some time on the set just kind of maybe shadowing Doug and, uh, and observing. I mean, we had Brady. And uh, Belichick. Twice. Yeah, we had we Brady had him on twice. The, in the movies so. and on the show. Right. Cool. And you, Gronk's in the movie. Well, and Edelman. Edelman's in the movie, yes. Gronk's in the movie. Yes. Russell Wilson, we know, is in the movie yes. because uh, somebody broke a leg. <laughs> yeah. The right. pass heard around the world. Right. I mean, <laughs> what, walk me through that. What, what happened on the, the on, actual on the, play? Yeah. What happened with Russell Wilson? You know, it, it was supposed to be and, <clears throat> here. We're going to, there's a beach montage kind of party scene. And Doug was like, well, we'll get a shot of Russell, you know, throwing you guys some passes. You guys will go one on one a little bit. And mm -hmm. of course, we made the agreement like, all right, let's go easy. Mm -hmm. But Connolly drilled me on the first take. I do a little five <laughs> yard out and he just pops me. And then we just went back and forth a couple of times. I think the actual play, you know, post route, he caught it. I kind of wrapped him up and I was. I think the play was stopping, and he tried to extend the, to break the plane. Sort of like Dez in, in, in Green Bay. Exactly, exactly. and like okay. left his feet. And I kind of slid down his body a little bit, and I think my weight... You snapped his leg. Yeah. yeah. You snapped Kevin Connolly's leg as he's trying to score on a Russell you Wilson like connection. like Lawrence Taylor on Theismann. <laughs> I still, I still am not over it because 
We and everyone and oh, all the no. football players in the building, you'd think someone would be like, oh, he broke his leg. Everyone's like, ah, oh, it's a high ankle sprain. Guy worked for like two more days. Did he? Finally got x rays. He, he walked broke around his on leg a broken leg doing scenes, like doing these walking places. talks. Tough kid. Tough yeah. kid for sure. So did, did, Iron Man. Did the take it at least make the movie? Did it make the final cut? Is it in there? I don't think it is. No. <laughs> yeah, they got to put that in. I mean, That's come on. An outrage. Oh, oh, I think the one of we him gotta... laying me out's in there. So uh... but we have to unlock the picture. Right now, you know, if we he played broke it his leg over and over again trying to figure out what happened. Like there's a Bruno and it was, film. It was actually <laughs> tried out. It was pretty hard to watch, you know. So who else is in this movie? Because we saw a clip for the television audience. We showed you were hitting on Ronda Rousey, trying and she to hits date on her. Me physically, right? So uh, she's in this movie. I mean, we have some great cameos. The Tyson is in there. Yeah, Liam Tyson's Neeson. in there. Clay Matthews, Liam Neeson, Jessica Alba, Ed O'Neill. I mean, it's just and honestly, like. In true entourage fashion, what Doug Allen does so well is just kind of works these. Weaves them all in. Yeah. The crazy thing is he kind of picked both Super Bowl teams before the, well, well before the Super Bowl. I mean, we had. It was a year and a half before the so game. So many Patriots and, and so and many Seattle players in the movie. So when the Seahawks and Patriots made it, Doug was like high fiving people, makes it. I think it, he was high fiving himself a lot. Yeah. He was like, hey, I, <laughs> I, I think called it. Look yeah. what I created. <laughs> yeah, and so, but Doug, Doug Allen, again, he is, uh, he's the producer, he directs this, yes. uh, he's the mastermind, if you will, sure. along with Mark Wahlberg here. Um, he's a giant fan, too. Huge giant fan. So, yeah. okay, so the three, you, the, the three of you guys are giants. Uh, Kevin Connolly's Dolphins, Dolphins, right? Dolphins. I, I have no idea how that wrap happened. Wrap my head around Because he's from one. New York, isn't he? Yeah, I think he might have just kind of, I think maybe his brother is, I think I'm getting it maybe right. Maybe like the he, colors or something when he was a kid. I think he maybe <laughs> followed his brother's loyalty or something. Okay, and uh, Piven is a Bears fan. He's that a Bears I know. fan, yeah. yeah, so he's just a he's mess. He's a diehard Bears yeah. fan. <laughs> and Adrian Grenier has no interest in sports whatsoever. No, I have been told I, we that. told him, you're a Giant fan. Well, and yes. he accepted that, so okay. it's cool. And I was actually wrong, because he he's always out there. I said, dude, if anyone asks you, just say Seahawks. Hold on, Adrian who? Adrian Grenier. Grenier? Grenier. Grenier? <laughs> yeah. He's the Frenchman? He's Grenier. Yes. I mean, I know wow. it's well, well done. <laughs> okay. I'm so just, Adrian Grenier is a uh, is not a He's, he, you're telling him to be a sports fan, right? He I, he gets, I mean, he look, he, he's grown a lot since hanging out with us, but yeah, I don't he's think he... Fantastic. I don't At think one he, stage, you know, these guys are Yankee fans. Jerry's a Yankee fan, Kevin Connolly's a Yankee fan, but we're supposed to be guys from Queens. Yeah. I'm a Mets fan. Right. And Adrian's what, like, what, what should I be? I said, you are a Mets fan. We're from Queens. We're brothers. You would be a Mets fan. Well, can they score some runs from Matt Harvey or what? I know. That'd be nice. What we got that great staff. We what? need some bats. We need some bats. They need David Wright coming back David in there. Wright would be right? nice. yeah, that'll help. That'll so, help. Yeah. yeah. So you're Met. You're Yankee. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. What do you think of A-Rod? Are you like me? You're, here, let me, can I describe Please. my feelings of A-Rod? Please. I was uh, coming into the season because Brockman over there is sitting yeah. behind his Patriot helmet. Yeah. You know, he's a, <laughs> oh, yeah. he's a New England guy. He's a Boston Red Sox guy. He's trolling all over me. Oh, you got A-Rod back. You know, he's going to make a mess of everything. And I just said, I don't even want to hear from him. I don't want to see him. I don't want to hear from him. And then he started hitting what are those things called? Home, home runs. runs. Uh. Yes. <laughs> One after another. Now I refer to he's America's sweetheart. He is America's sweetheart. Yeah. I can't say That's, I predicted it because I didn't, but I think when did, I talked right? amongst my friend, no, I did say he's going to have a good year. It's just like if you were writing a script, mm -hmm. you would then go on to write like A-Rod having an MVP type year. And I just I just had a, not that I had a feeling, I just thought like, wow, that would be a ironic story. How does so he's America's sweetheart and Tom Brady is the villain now. He is the, the villain now. 2015, I, I make, folks. Makes no sense. <laughs> Come on. Good analogy, bro. I've got Kevin Dillon and Jerry Ferrara here. We'll take a break. Would you mind taking a couple phone calls from our listeners? For sure. Sure. Let's do it. Absolutely. So 844-204-RICH. If you're out there in the Rich Eisen Show audience, whether you're watching on audience on DirecTV or one of the quartet of Root Sports or listening on 170 now plus radio stations of our radio uh, network or uh, on the NFL Now app internationally, call in 844-204-RICH. We'll take your calls for two of the stars of Entourage in theaters June 3rd. Jerry Ferrara and Kevin Dillon right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Back in a minute. Welcome back to the Rich Eisen Show, the uh, dulcet tones of Jane's Addiction superhero that opened up the TV show Entourage for eight seasons on HBO. Now we'll be soon in a theater near you, June 3rd, Jerry Ferrara, Kevin Dillon right here on the program. Can you give us at least a hint of where the movie picks up at all? Yeah, the, the movie basically picks up a few days after the series left off. Vince went off to get married in Europe, and uh, my character was a millionaire. 
Johnny Drama just finished the movie that his brother directed him in. He thinks he did a really good job. He thinks he did maybe the best work of his career. Yeah. Unfortunately, not everyone else sees it that way. I'll be out of it like they always do. Yeah, it cuts to a few months after that moment, and uh, it brings you up to speed with a Piers Morgan piece on where the guys are. And um, the Vince character basically, it's all riding on this one. He's directing, he cast his brother. It's just uh, it's a throwback to the earlier seasons of the show. We're Fantastic. all together. I nothing. can't wait for it, man. I've got, um, again, uh, Jerry Ferrara and Kevin Dillon here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, we've got our phone lines all lit up. Before I, before I go uh, to the phone lines, you did, <laughs> Kevin, make an excellent point going to the commercial break about Brady is now a villain and A-Rod is a hero right now, and the world yeah. is completely upside down from where we see it. Uh, I'll give you the floor on Brady. You met him a couple times. He was on the set, and now, you know, everybody's impugning his character and yeah. things of that nature. What do you think about that? Because you're Giant fans. I mean, you denied him two championships. Yes, we did. We did. But we, all, we love him as a person. He's been on our show, mm -hmm. and he was in the movie. And uh, he came onto our show when actually Eli Manning couldn't make it. I, guess. I don't know what and happened, Peyton. but he fell out. So he was the last second. He kind of filled in. He did us a huge, huge favor, and he was just the greatest guy. I feel terrible about breaking his golf club in that scene. <laughs> but uh, he's, he's really, really a great guy. So it, but there's a lot of love for him. From, is that Wahlberg, like, basically calling him up? Because was Mark, yeah. 100%. Uh, it, it was a last-second dropout. We were all very disappointed, but we have this script that was tailored around, mm -hmm. you know, the Mannings. And then, literally, I think Mark said, you want me to call Tom? Right. And I think this was, like, just after the, the injury season where he didn't play. So he also had a lot going in, riding on that next season. Mm -hmm. And he came and killed it for yeah. us. I've got uh, Jerry Ferrara and Kevin Dillon here on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, let's go to the phone lines right now. You take some calls from our yeah, friends. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Hayden in Georgia, you're first up here on the Rich Eisen Show. Hayden? Uh, yes. You're on with Kevin and Jerry. Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. How, you doing? how are you doing? I'm doing quite well. So uh, the question I have for you guys is, um, how is the you know how is the translation of the show into a movie going to change the dynamic of the story? It's a good question. Yeah. Okay. You Thank it? you for you the call, Hayden. Uh, yeah. You know, we always felt like we shot it like a film. Yeah. So I didn't really feel the, you know the acting wasn't all that different. Uh, we were able to take a pause, which we can't always do in a <laughs> half-hour TV show. So it's able to you know take a little comic pause or dramatic beat, which is always a, a plus for an actor. Yeah, and uh, that was Hayden. Our phones just, uh, I think, just took a poop, I think, right? Is that what just Did happened? Did we break I saw, the phone lines? I saw, it was sort of like, it was like Kevin Connolly's leg right there. <laughs> I mean, it was looked great, it looked intact, our phone lines were absolutely lit, and then all of them just went dead. Uh, so in the meantime, how, how does one, because you see how many people are, are in the film. Yes. As cameos in sports celebrities who are either hosts of television shows or 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 uh, uh, athletes what, how does one take it if they weren't asked to be in the film and they're not in a movie that it seems the free world was asked to be in how should one take that jerry well, I, I mean i really Kevin? actually think that there's a there's a lot of solicitation that goes on i mean i do think like doug for instance did write the ronda rousey role sure. so ronda had it but in terms of a lot of the cameos you'll see in the movie, a lot of them are people who just said, hey, I would love to be in the movie. And it was a situation where I, I remember specifically Doug just going, oh, my God, Mike Tyson's going to be here in two hours. Right. Let's figure out something to do with him. Like, that was not a plan. Jim out. Gray got him in. Yeah, Jim, Jim, Jim Gray, Gray made it. No Jim way. Gray made the phone call. No <laughs> way. Yeah, Hold on a minute. The rich. Jerry, Jim Gray is the Forrest Gump of sports. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's in the middle of everywhere at every era of yeah. sports. Am yeah. I right? I mean, like, we could go back to the first marathon being run probably where? In Greece, right? Or, Jim Gray. Okay. Jim, <laughs> Jim, Gray, <laughs> Jim Gray was there after marathon crossed at 26.2 <laughs> miles and basically said, there are people here who think you couldn't do 26.3. What do you say about that? <laughs> you go back. I think Jim was there. Well, I think Jim was there. I uh, had to arm wrestle Clay Matthews in the Entourage movie for a, just a quick shot. Again, not okay. knowing Clay was going to show up. And Jim Gray announces it, basically. He kind of, like, sets us up. And it's just like, a re yeah, he we referees it, he announces it, and he does the post, he does the so post game. So you're telling me I, I had to call and reach out to Doug I, and say, hey, man, you got something for me? I mean, I can't, I'm, I'm not going to do that. In there for the I next can't do one. it. I hear you doing it. You're like me. You know what I mean? Come on, I, if I had nothing to do in Entourage but still was in a position to be a cameo, I would not ask. You're you know, in like season one, we couldn't get it, a cameo. <laughs> Nobody would do it. Are you we were asking everyone, cameo. and they would say no. 
Are you now serious? Now we don't have to ask anyone. They're asking us. Everyone to come was on. freaked out to play themselves on the show that they still didn't really know. Are you making fun of us? Are we making fun of? They didn't Interesting. Know. Yeah. We had to beg, borrow, and steal cameos. Who was the first cameo? Can you remember that off the, the top of your the head? The very, very first in the pilot was Ali Lauder, and that's just because someone who we did have didn't show up. Or was it Jessica <laughs> Alba? Was Jessica Alba in the Jessica pilot? Alba was not, early, was not in the pilot. She was, she was in, okay. uh, I think, like episode <laughs> two. Right. She was. Val and Kilmer came in early. Val Kilmer early. Played the, Jimmy uh, Kimmel the Sherpa. Early. Kimmel, yeah. Kimmel. But we had to he beg was just, He was just on the rise too. How, at that yeah. stage. How about Nick Nolte? W w or not, uh, uh, Gary Busey, excuse me. That's the, the second time someone's yes, yeah. mistaken just, Gary Busey for Nick Nolte. Yeah. How do you think way? Nick I, feels I, about that? I don't uh, know. Okay. How do you think Gary feels? I mean, you can ask him both my questions. Is he really? Yeah, we lived right right across from each other in Malibu. Are you serious? Yeah, that was the Malibu The guy's a legend. All of that. No, hold on a minute. So you walk out the door and you see Nick just like getting in his car? I do, yeah. I do. <laughs> awesome. Do you borrow like a cup of sugar from him? <laughs> no, I haven't done that, but he's been over the house a couple times. He's been over his house and, you know, had a couple bevies. And had... it's awesome. He's a great guy. That has to be. He's one of the best American actors. No doubt. Today, yeah, so what one should neighbor. not confuse him with. No. No. <laughs> I not apologize that, not that to Nick Nolte. Nolte's not good. <laughs> but Gary Busey, yes. Yeah. Gary's great in his Just own right, man. I mean, Nick I Nolte is but the man. Gary Busey, that whole, you guys shot that whole episode in Malibu, right? Yeah. And like, he was kind of weird. I, I think you might have said this on the podcast. Like, it was acting, but it, he was also out there. No, he, right? he came in. If, if memory serves me correctly, I think he told Doug Allen, no, I'm not going to give you your words. I'm going to give you the truth. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Which, well, <laughs> What does now that I'm thinking mean? exactly. What does that mean? And, and I think he also said, "Look, no one could write Gary Busey better than Gary Busey." <coughs> and I, and and that was one of the first improvs I think we ever did. Is me on the beach with him, and he decided he wanted to christen me on the beach by <laughs> dumping ocean water on my head and relieving me of my sins for breaking his art sculpture. So like, that's the truth. That is that's our. The truth. That is that's our, the truth. That wasn't words. That was. He was giving truth. He's so quotable. Like, Kevin Connolly and I always look. He, he just improv this one thing we were talking about on the show. Like, oh, Gary, we got to go. We have this meeting. He goes, your lives and your meetings are meaningless. <laughs> <laughs> he used to chase Kevin Connolly around and go, we're going to play Tickle and Pee. Yeah. And he chased Kevin Connolly. He will grow, Gary Busey, who's not a little guy, will grab you and try to tickle you till you pee. <laughs> It's a true story. It's pretty I said, Gary, I'm a grown man. Please don't tickle me. But it sounds like there's only one way that game could end, though. You just got to pee early and get it over. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say you call for security, but there's also that way, too. You just submit to the, the just, spirit of tickle or pee, like right? Tickle just, the Elmo. Just show up in your depends when you see Gary. <laughs> and just go. Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's take one more call. Matt in Texas, you're on with, uh, Kevin, uh, with uh, Kevin Dillon and Jerry Ferrara here on The Rich Eisen Show. Hey, guys. What's up, man? Uh, hey, huge what's fan. up, Matt? Thanks. I uh, just wanted to say, uh, I wanted to, you guys to touch on the, the deflate gate a little bit more. I know you spoke about the villain earlier. I uh, just wanted to know your thoughts on uh, what do you think about him deflating the balls and if you think that uh, the suspension is credited. Look, I, here's a very non-professional opinion. You know, I, I, I just always was from the school of thought that there's just that going on everywhere, kind of similar to how a pitcher likes to work, you know, baseball a little bit. I, I didn't know it was such a big deal until this story broke. I don't, I didn't, I, and then we were just, we were talking off the air. I was asking Rich, because your, your opinion is very important to me. Like, if it's anyone else but Tom Brady, is this as much of a story? And maybe if it was Peyton Manning, it would be. But uh, I also think it's it's taking the best team and a, and a historic franchise now at this point and kind of gunning for them. But, uh... I just feel like there's got to be still, a way to... There's still kind of a lack of evidence, too, isn't there? I mean, I mean I, there's certainly evidence, but you would think that in today's day, like, there's just a way to either let the teams handle their own footballs or have yeah. someone designated there to watch yeah, the footballs at all times if you're going to make it that much of an issue. Yeah, and if, if the referee hands him the football... It's got to be on the ref at that point. Don't the refs you gave handle me this the ball football to play. during the yeah. game quite often as well? They don't know that it's... Well, and then, you know, the Patriots are saying there's the ideal gas law at stake that nobody knows how the weather would affect. You're losing I mean, me with science I now, know that. I mean, I'm, you, actually, I'm blinding you with it's it. It's like an episode of Breaking Bad now. You know, I, I, and I know. The whole thing is just, it's sort of crazy. I just wonder if there is a rule of the PSI of the bladder and tickle or pee. You know, like, <laughs> I'm just, I'm fascinated by this Gary Busey concoction. Well, I didn't even know about PSI. So I saw my tire was flat and I saw the PSI alarm. Oh, yeah. like, oh, <laughs> that. Yeah. Now 
it's all full circle. Yeah, some guy from New Hampshire must have been around your tires. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for coming in. Of course. Any, you any this has been great. I mean, really, you please come back and uh, for another time. And, Kevin, don't be a stranger. This is your first oh, time here. Please here. come back. Kidding? Anytime. We'll come on, talk about whatever you want, whether it's to. Nick Nolte, your neighbor, yeah, yeah, or the, your Giants, or the uh, the Mets. We'd love. I'd love to have the you. Rangers. There you go. Oh, your Premier Rangers, tickets. too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, last Premier night. Tickets. that's the, 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 Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys want premiere tickets. That's on the air talk. Last time Jerry was on, if you recall, he did invite us to the premiere. Yeah, but that was on the air, right? It's got to be off the air. You guys know you've been in doing this time. You know that. You've seen Entourage enough to know he's being fake right now. Of course. Yeah, and we'll talk off the air. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk offline, as they say. Jerry Ferrara, Kevin Dillon, go see Entourage, as if you already weren't going to anyway, but go see it in theaters June 3rd. Thanks for coming on, guys. Thanks, the best. Thanks again. You got it. Thanks again, buddy. The Rich Eisen Show. Weekdays at noon Eastern. On audience.